Here in Connecticut, the local officials giving some insight into the technology those crews in Baltimore may be using as they search for those missing people. News aides Brittany Taylor has that. Good evening. We're here on the waterfront in Bramford, and according to first responders, these water rescues can be incredibly dangerous and complex. We spoke to divers who cover the Connecticut shoreline. They gave us a deeper look into sonar technology and how it's used to try and find missing people during these complex operations. Uh, Bramford Fire Department has progressed to using a side scan sonar. We're on a boat with Branford Fire Deputy Chief Mike Stackpole. He's showing us a critical tool, sonar, used in water rescues. Before this kind of technology, we would only be able to see what's on the surface of the water. So we would look for uh, boat parts, car parts, whatever we were looking for, floating or people. Um, but now we could see underwater as well. Deputy Chief Stackpole says sonar uses sound waves that bounce back. Imagery from those sound waves are then depicted on a computer. And it's not just on the boats. These Guilford fire divers have a handheld sonar device, making their search even more accurate. I mean, if you think about a body of water, it's like looking for a needle in a, in a haystack. So essentially, we can scan the water, and uh, this will tell us exactly how far out and at what depth we need to be looking. Crews say the device can work as far as 200 feet. But even with sonar, rescue crews involved in the Baltimore bridge collapse are likely facing very complex challenges. And then you're trying to map the cars, I would imagine, you know, where did they go? How many are there trying to get the count? It's an unknown environment underneath the water. I've had some experience in Baltimore Harbor. The visibility is not great. The water around the bridge is about 50 feet deep. It is likely frigid and the search area is enormous. The whole bridge fell, so now you have the whole span to look for instead of just this area, right? Once you start expanding out, like it, it becomes a logistical nightmare. Kerry says divers have on average 30 minutes before their oxygen runs out. As they try to find those who are missing, they put their own lives at risk. Scuba diving is the most dangerous thing that we do. Now, while the sonar technology isn't 100% accurate as yet, first responders say it's been incredibly beneficial when it comes to finding people during these operations. But one remaining challenge is that the technology is constantly evolving. In Brantford, Brittany Taylor, News 8.